Tuesday, May 21st, a federal judge dismissed the felony convictions of five retired Navy officers for bribery charges in related to a Malaysian contractor named Fat Leonard. But who's Fat Leonard, you may ask? Hmm, is it a fat guy named Leonard? Let's find out. One of the biggest bribery investigations in United States military history led to the conviction and sentencing of nearly two dozen Navy officials, defense contractors, and others on various fraud and corruption charges. An enigmatic figure who is six foot three and weighed 350 pounds at one time, a guy named Francis owned and operated his family's ship servicing business, Singapore-based Glen Defense Marine Asia, which supplied food, water, and fuel to vessels. So for those of you that don't know, like when ships are abroad, obviously they only have so much supplies on hand. They might have food, they might have water, they might have various types of rations and things like that, but they only have enough for so long and they have to resupply when they're abroad. And sometimes they can get resupplied by other Navy vessels on the ocean. And so Sometimes they'll get resupplied by local vendors or contractors that we've got contacts with or that we have reputations and relationships with in various nations as they're traveling around the world. The Malaysian defense contractor, nicknamed Fat Leonard, was a key contact for US Navy ships at ports across Asia for more than two decades. During that time, he bribed naval officers with offerings of things like Kobe beef, expensive cigars, concert tickets, and women. In exchange, the officers, including the first active duty admiral to be convicted of a federal crime, concealed the scheme in which Francis would overcharge for supplying ships or charge for fake services at ports that he controlled in Southeast Asia. The officers passed him classified information like when and where they would be stopping and even went so far as redirecting military vessels to ports that were lucrative for his Singapore-based ship servicing company. Classified information can be as something as simple as where ships are going and when they're going to be there and what time they're going to be there and like things like that, that is classified information because you don't want people to be able to predict your, your vessel's movement. These are things that people get briefed in like operational security briefs, like to say, hey, when you're getting your hair cut at the barber shop, maybe you don't tell them when you're going to leave port or that you're deploying or anything like that. Because there's an old saying that goes, loose lips sink ships. On top of that, they were rerouting the vessels to go to different places that maybe weren't on their planned itinerary for travel. They were doing that because they were being bribed with <laughs> gifts and things like that. I did a little bit of research because I was kind of curious about how costly it is to redirect a ship. So I just picked like an Arleigh Burke class destroyer and all I could find on the internet from what I did from the limited research that I was able to do and it's all unclassified. You can Google this stuff, right? In fiscal year 2020, somebody said that the DOD was paying about $2.98 per gallon for fuel. So let's just say like $3 a gallon. That means an Arleigh Burke class destroyer in 2020 it would cost them about $3,000 per hour of travel, which means that for one full day of travel, it's about $72,000. If you travel for a week, because it takes time for a ship to get from one place to another, they don't just like get there in a couple days, like they're crossing vast oceans. For a solid week of travel, it could cost about $504,000 at that rate. If they're making huge detours that were completely out of the way, the money would add up significantly just for fuel costs. So Francis and his firm, Glen Defense Marine Asia, provided Navy ships with security security, water, trash removal, and other supplies and services. With the help of the officers in his pocket, he consistently overbilled. In a plea agreement, he admitted to cheating the Navy and US taxpayers out of at least $35 million. $35 million. That's a lot of money. Some investigators said that the estimated loss was actually closer between $50 million and $100 million. As a result of this, a number of admirals were placed under investigation and asked about their contacts or the relationship with Francis. Down the road a few years, in a federal sting, Francis was lured to San Diego on false pretenses and arrested at a hotel in September of 2013. He pled guilty in 2015, admitting that he had offered more than $500,000 in cash bribes to Navy officials, defense contractors, and others. As a part of this plea deal, he cooperated with the investigation leading to the Navy convictions. He himself 
faced up to 25 years in prison. While he was awaiting sentencing, Francis was hospitalized and treated for renal cancer and other medical issues. After leaving the hospital, he was allowed to stay out of jail at a rental home on house arrest with a GPS ankle monitor and security guards. But three weeks later, before his scheduled sentencing in September of 2022, he snipped off his monitor, made an escape, setting off an international search. Officials said that he fled to Mexico, made his way to Cuba, and eventually got to Venezuela. Once he got to Venezuela, he was arrested and he was taken into custody. He was actually caught while he was trying to board a flight at the Simon Bolivar International Airport outside of Caracas. Venezuelan officials said he intended to reach Russia. So the guy was trying to get to Russia, probably to seek asylum there more than likely because he was on the run from the US government. In any case, he spent about 15 months in a Venezuelan prison and apparently he tried to seek asylum there before the US brokered a deal with the Venezuelan government, freeing a close ally of Venezuelan president, Nicolas Maduro, in exchange for the release of 10 Americans in prison in Venezuela and for Francis's extradition back to the United States. Earlier this fall, the felony convictions of those Navy officers I was referring to were vacated following allegations of prosecutorial misconduct. U.S. District Judge Janice Sammartino agreed to allow them to plead guilty to a misdemeanor and pay a hundred dollars fine each. I'll let you decide whether or not that was like an adequate punishment for the crime or not. The crazier part is that this went on for a number of years as he saw. I think he had a relationship with the Navy for over two decades. In any case, I know that the relationship between contractors and American service members is a fairly important one because like I said, we work with contractors in a lot of various locations to help support whatever mission we have at that time. We've got people that work on supply chain management that are contractors. We got a lot of contractors that work for specific defense logistics companies. We got a lot of contractors that work with acquisition. We got a lot of contractors that work with fuel resupply, with folks that are working in communications, military technology, repairs. A lot of these civilians are more subject matter experts than a military service, like a service member. So it's not unusual that we use contractors for things like this, but obviously it can go awry real quick if people allow their integrity to be corrupted. I don't know a lot of the specifics about this other than what I just told you. I'm sure it goes much deeper than that because if there was that many people investigated during the situation when it all first came out, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that were involved that may not have ever even been discovered. This specific situation is something that we actually get briefs about when it comes to insider threats because corruption is is always something people are concerned about and they want to make sure that people aren't being manipulated not only because you could end up getting in a situation like this but also because it could put service members in danger if you are giving away the locations and times of where your naval ships are going to be or you're giving away deployment times or locations where your unit's going to be getting deployed to for a, a given mission so there's a reason why operational security is so important my hope is because this is so so out in the open and people have seen it and it's it's very highlighted in the news and everything else. My hope is that this will prevent people from repeating the same mistakes in the future. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that this was something that you learned from. I hope that this was insightful and we'll see you in the next video.